Hello, Knights fans. Welcome inside the Naimoli Family Baseball Complex for the final edition of the Knights Baseball Roundup. I'm, of course, joined by FDU Baseball Coach Gary Puccio. And uh, we made it, Gary. We are here. Um, we have an interview with one of the tri captains, Eric Steiner, with Corbin Gapsky when we get to it. And uh, we have no alumni question of the week. Thank you, alumni, for sending your questions in. We will bring that segment back. Um, we are very thankful for that. But, Gary, let's talk about this weekend series with Mount St. Mary's. Um, the Saturday, another couple tough losses, close games. Your players battled tough. And then Sunday, the sweep in the doubleheader ended on a high note. Give me some thoughts first on the, uh, the Saturday doubleheader, though. So how you doing, Ryan? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> you didn't answer that before. Oh, we're doing well. Um, Double had a loss Saturday. I thought we played well. Yeah, it's kind of sin, but it's just kind of a, a, a synopsis of our whole season. We lost three to two. Had to lead two one late. Uh, Brandon Butler pitched terrific. Got tired. Told me he didn't have anything left. We went to the bullpen. Just really weren't ready to go to bullpen. I don't think I was as prepared as I should have been, and uh, led to us losing three to two. And then the second game, we lost six five. Had the time run thrown out the plate for the last out of the game. It's just the, the kids played hard. I have no gripes with how hard they work. We got to get a little smarter. There's some things we keep doing that hurts us, like putting leadoff men on with walks or hit batters or making an error at the wrong time. And that, part of that's the growing process, and hopefully we'll get better at that next year. But this was a big series for Mount, and uh, after losing the first two, the next day was going to be very critical for a lot of teams. We, I think the whole league was basically watching us on Sunday because uh, our games affected both Mount, Wagner, and and LIU, so so we know it was a big game on Sunday, and at least our guys came to play. Yeah, good performances on Sunday with the whole league watching. You played the spoiler role, basically eliminated LIU, Brooklyn, and Mount while facing Mount. Um, so tough for them to wait till the final day to get there. But after a season like you've had, I think it was good to end on a high note like that, kind of knock the two teams out. Um, now Sunday was also, like I said, good performances. The offense, uh, in, well, in game one, uh, John Chalupa got a no decision, pitched pitched well after the last few struggling uh, starts. And Eric Snyder got his team leading third, uh, third win, becomes only one of a handful of players in, in the country that uh, lead their teams in saves and wins. Um, so good on him. And you also, I know you want to say something to him as well. You have an announcement. Yeah, well, first of all, to, the fact that he leads our team in wins and saves, and it's only three wins, that just tells you what kind of year we had because that shouldn't really be happening. But. Uh, you know, Eric's my guy. I mean, he's been my guy for three years here. He's got a phenomenal record as a closer. Uh, he's blown, I think, four saves in his career here. Two of them, he came back and won. This year, the only save he blew all year was when I brought him back in the day after uh, a uh, three-inning performance in relief, the longest I've ever had him go to save a game. And the next day, you know, he got the loss, and, and we made an error in that inning that, that the inning should have been over, so the game should have been over. So he's money in the bank. I just love going to him. And yesterday, when we played Mount, it was 1-1 in the eighth. And I just said, I asked tonight if he had two innings for me. He said he did. He said, you're going out there for the eighth and ninth. Let's, they want to go to playoffs, let them beat my best. And, uh, and obviously, they didn't. And we were lucky enough to score a couple of runs in the eighth inning and extra innings and nailed it down So for Eric's win, third win of the year. Um, do you want to announce, based on his performance this year, that Eric's been named our MVP for the season? And I think it's richly deserved. He's had uh, a great culmination for three years, really. And uh, the kid's just been the most consistent and the most talented closer I've probably ever coached in my life. And uh, we congratulate him on being the MVP of the team. Absolutely. Congrats, Eric. Um, that wasn't his final appearance, though. He did pitch in game two of that doubleheader. The offense had a good game. Matt McCann, three for four from the leadoff spot, continuing his toward finish to the season. Uh, Joe Borelli started, but Matt McD uh, Ryan McDonald in relief pitched five innings of no-hit ball, perhaps his best performance of, the, of, his, of his career to date, his second career victory. And the offense also showed up and ended on a really high note. So give me some thoughts on that game as well. Yeah, I, you know, it's pretty special Mickey winning the last game of the year because obviously, you know, I know Ryan since he's nine years old when I used to give him pitching lessons, which is pretty cool. And I was his high school math. I mean, we, we go so far back, it's not even funny. And uh, 
and he came out there and I, I said can you give me three innings he said yeah I can give you three innings and as he went to start the third inning, he says coach I feel super today he says yeah he says I think I can stay in here a little longer I said listen the way you're pitching I'm more than willing to ride with you I mean you haven't given up a hit yet and as he said he turned out he threw five innings and no hit ball and by the time we turned the ball over to bullpen I mean I brought him in at four to two by the time we turned the ball over to bullpen it was eight to two and that was great. So, so it turned out. Uh, I think the final score was ten to four. But he pitched super, and, and the offense came alive in that game. Matt McCann continues to play outstanding. I mean, he's really improved his game through the course of the year. He's had a terrific freshman campaign. Same thing with Zach Tondi. They've been absolutely outstanding. You know, Johnny Jackis came just short of 50 hits for the year. Had a real nice season for us. I mean, Riley's catches in center field are still talked about. He makes a catch every series. That's just amazing. So, you know, there's a lot of positives about the team, but, but we've got to turn those, you know, we lost six conference games by one run. We've got to turn them into wins. That's the bottom line is, you know, it's not good enough to be close. It has to start becoming productive. And, yeah, everyone says, well, you had no seniors and we only start one junior and all well, that's true. But at the same time, winning's contagious and we need to start winning. And I thought ending on that kind of note the last two games was at least a positive to build on for next year. Oh, without a doubt. Um, let's, let's take some reflection back on the season. I know you said six one-run games, all the close losses, one you know out at home plate, one botched double play ball, whatever it may be, um, could lead to some victories and maybe even a playoff spot. But I did mention to you before the interview began, I mean, you're not losing any seniors to graduation, so it's not like you're losing anyone to a, you know, a rough season and they have to go off and leave after you. They, they're all moving forward. You have your tr three tri-captains moving in. you got two now two seniors, two of them seniors. And some of your freshmen, as you mentioned, McCann, Tondi, had fantastic freshman campaigns. So there's a lot to build around. And just, you know, give me some thoughts on the season, some of the improvements you've seen, especially from your captains, from where they started, Pat, midseason being announced as a captain, and where you see your team ended uh, mentally and you know on the, on the field well i i felt the biggest problem we had this year is we 27 games this year we scored three runs or less so that doesn't give your pitchers a lot of room for any kind of mistakes and also we hit like 268 as a team so the batting average was pretty respectable it's situational hitting that we were bad at getting runners you know we, i remember central connecticut specifically home here losing 6-5 and we had first and third and bottom of the ninth with nobody out and didn't score. Well, you know, it's a game like that that helps build confidence. You get a win there. You know, Central finished second. We beat them twice. And we should have beat them a third time. So things like that, if you turn that loss into a win, it helps build confidence. And that carries over into the next series. And we just never got that going this year for whatever reason. It just never happened for us. We had that one little streak where we won six out of eight. And we had the lead in the bottom of the ninth at LIU and lost that game. And, and we kind of fell off a cliff after that the rest of the season because it was just, you know, we were really climbing up into back into contention for a playoff spot. And that just, that just kind of destroyed everything. We just fell apart after that. Had a tough, tough run after that. But again, as you said, finishing yesterday with a high note with a couple of Ws definitely built some momentum for going into next year. I felt the team improved in general. I just felt... We, didn't, we underachieved. I mean, I thought the team on paper was better than what the end record was. And, and uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Well, you know, untimely errors, pitches walking batters to lead. I think our, our first batter against on base percentage was almost 50%. Uh, you know, if you're getting a leadoff man on 50% of the time against you, you're giving up a lot of runs, you know. Team ERA was in the low fives, which is fairly respectable at this level. And and much better than last year. I mean, last year was in the seven, so I mean, there was great improvement in that. But we're still walking too many batters. We're still not getting that big hit when we have to get it. Some of that's because they're young, and some of that's because we have to get focused better, have to have a better approach on things, and hopefully that will show up next year. All right, now you're heading into the summer, uh, the summer off season. Give me some of your goals for the off season. what you want your players, not just yourself, your coaches, uh, what you want them to accomplish in the off season. what you want them to bring back, and when you, uh, and also, when do you want to get started in the fall and uh, with, the, with the players turning to practice? Yeah, well, you know, we kind of ask everyone to play summer ball so that they keep working on their skills, and I know everyone is, and that's always a positive because it's a chance to work on things and keep getting better, more at-bats, more innings pitched. All of that helps. I know a couple of them are coaching as well this summer. Yeah, Anthony and uh, Eric and Yona I know are coaching a team. I don't know about anybody else, but I know through my bullpen, I told them I'm going to come down and boo them the way they boo <laughs> me, so we'll see how that goes. But, but uh, yeah, 
we just want to strive to getting better. Like one of the things I told him was if you had a good year this year, have a better year next year. If you had a bad year this year, then go have a good one next year. Just improve. And if everyone just improves a little bit, I think we're close. I mean, I really believe the record's not indicative of the talent level. And it was just one of those years where we just underachieved and just couldn't find, you know, we found ways to lose those close games instead of win them. And, and hopefully you turn the one-run losses into one-run wins next year. And we're going to start in the fall sometime around the 20th of September. Uh, one of the things the kids and I have discussed about, we used to usually play like four games in the fall. We're talking about cutting that down and playing a couple more games early in the season in the spring so you got more games under your belt before the league starts. So we'll see how it goes. All right. That's Gary Puccio, the FDU baseball coach. And uh, Gary, you've been, you've been great all season long and dealing with our outtakes. Um, <laughs> and uh, I know the weather also was pretty brutal for like the first entire half of the season. But thank you for uh, joining us every week, giving your thoughts and insights on the Nace Baseball Roundup. Before we close, the only other announcement I need to make is, because uh, I know you're going to turn it over to the closer, who's with my closer. Our closer, yeah. Our closer, your closer, and my closer. Are they closer? I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. Um, but we do want to say that I don't know if Corbin's going to still be able to do catching up with Corbin during baseball season. I don't. I guess we're going to have to work that detail out because uh, Corbin's going to be back on the baseball team next year for his senior season. Uh, I don't know how many of you know that Corbin was a member of the team back when he was a freshman, and he kind of got uh, curtailed or or direct into these other avenues, becoming this outstanding announcer that he is, an outstanding interviewer, and catching up with Corbin and all those terrific things. He's been phenomenal at it. So he kind of found a career for himself now, and, and now it's time for him to go out and enjoy his senior year with the thing he loves, which is playing baseball. So welcome back, Corbin. I have no idea how that's going to affect catching up with Corbin or if he's going to be able to do the nice baseball roundup as a player. Uh, if not, we'll figure it out. I do want to say, though, come, like, Probably about the 12th game of the season, either Corbin and I will be standing there going, what did we do? <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said, from our closer to yours, Gary, uh, and also with the team MVP, Corbin Gapsky, and potentially is his final Knights Baseball Roundup appearance, taking it on with uh, the junior closer, Eric Snyder. Nice fans, thanks for uh, joining us the entire ride. I know it's been long, but we're here, we made it, and uh, have a great summer. And FDUnites.com is your hub for all baseball news, information, everything, and um, keep with us. And again, have a great summer. Gary, anything to add? I just want to thank the parents and the alumni for the support all year. We know it was a tough year, but I can't tell you how many parents traveled all over the place to watch us play, and it doesn't go unnoticed, and it is appreciated. Yes, especially that and also for sticking up with it. I've had a few parents as well stop me during the games to tell me how, how great of a job we've been doing and how great it is that we do it every week and uh, we're happy to do it. Um, it's also for, it's mostly for you guys. You're happy to do it. I don't remember ever saying I was happy to do it. <laughs> we're happy to do it. I know he's happy to do it. Um, so, again, thank you, everyone, for uh, following us this season. And let's send it over to Corbin and Eric. <laughs>
and how 90 feet away sometimes we were there to win these games against Sacred Heart, uh, Central Connecticut. Um, Brian is always a powerhouse, but these other three teams in the playoffs, I mean, we kind of stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and I think that we need to take that into consideration next year with confidence and, and some poise and know that we have a good team on the field at all times. We just have to play like it. And you mentioned that team. So what are the rest of the guys saying? I mean, you had the bus ride back from Mount St. Mary's yesterday. You were the spoilers yesterday. So yeah. that must have been a good way to end the season. But what were the guys saying the road back uh, to FDU? Um, well, like you said, we played the spoiler role. And that's kind of our whole mindset the whole weekend was we were going to go down there and we were going to end the dream for Mount St. Mary's. And uh, we went out down there expecting to hopefully win four and get us out of last place. Though that didn't happen in, in day one, um, day two gave us the opportunity to give LIU and Wagner a shot at playoffs rather than Mount St. Mary. So by taking the two, I think it was huge for the team. Uh, we were kind of in high spirits on the bus ride home knowing we kind of have a two game, it's not a win streak, but we did come off of two wins to end the season on some form of a high note being such a, a kind of a, a downer season that we had. But uh, a lot of the guys are just looking forward to next year, looking forward to the wins that we just left and kind of rebooting those one run games and coming back stronger and, and faster and more ready to win and hopefully uh, we could do that next year. Now I don't know if there's like a seating chart on the bus ride back or you have to sit in certain seats, but I gotta ask, like what did the captain say? I mean, I don't know if you guys talked on the way back, but did the captain say anything differently or opposed to like maybe your roommates? Um, well, my roommates are obviously, they're all pitchers with Ryan McDonald. I mean, he's got a, that's something we get to look forward to as well as next year's Ryan McDonald's uh, lefty arm out of the pen. I mean, he showed us um, tremendous work as a starter, our Friday starter for the last month. And so he's look, I'm looking forward to that for next year as well. But back to the question, um, uh, we kind of sit separately, the captains. I kind of sit in the very back. I'm the back seat of the bus. Shane's kind of in the middle and Pat's up front. But uh, talking to them just throughout the season, we kind of like realized that we have to try to take control of these guys and kind of like keep them on like keep their head on their shoulders and keep their head straight, knowing that we didn't have a good season, but we are very, very close to having that good season. And him, we just try to uh, keep each other confident and keep the rest of the team uh, together and keep that gel to hopefully uh, come back next year with these one-run games and turn them around and be on the winning end of these one-run games next season. Absolutely. And let's stick with the captain role a little bit here. This is your second year being a captain. Yeah. So I have to ask you a little bit, what did you take from this year being a captain opposed to last year? It's your first year, so did you learn something different being a second-year captain? You're only, the only second-year captain. Yeah. Shane just got announced this year, and then Pat was like middle-of-the-season guy announced. So I got to know your view on that. Uh, well, last year my captain role was kind of a uh, the, the baby captain. I was the youngest of the three. Uh, Eric Anderson and Kyle Weeks did a great job leading the team and I just tried to take notes. And this year I found that it um, was a lot heavier on my back, a lot of weight on my shoulder to be the veteran captain to try to lead everybody. And Shane came in and did a tremendous job with the fielders and the hitters and then Patrick halfway through the season did a great job with trying to like keep coach at bay and let coach know like when he's possibly stepping out of line and Shane did the same thing and I just worked with the pitchers. So it was nice to know that we have two guys that can like pick me up on the offensive side of things that I only really deal with the pitchers. So it was nice uh, this year to be the veteran captain to kind of have control over everybody this year, not just the younger guys. And uh, I don't know, it was nice. It was nice this year. But like I said, a lot more weight, a lot more uh, I don't know stuff on my back this year. And a lot more on your face. I mean, last year you said you're the baby captain. Now you're yeah. coming back with a beer. So you're really showing them you're the veteran now. Absolutely. So uh, my final question for you is, is, what are you hoping to get from this summer? I mean, you're going your senior year to last year. You're already being a senior. Time flies by. So i got to ask you a little bit, what are you uh, um, looking forward to for the summer? Well, I'm kind of taking a different approach this summer uh, than typical. Um, I'm actually going to be just working out this summer, trying to get bigger, stronger, trying to improve my, uh, my stuff as a pitcher, uh, my velocity, my breaking stuff, try to control my command keep uh, keep that at bay. I'm also going to be coaching a 12 year old team this summer mm -hmm. which I'm going to hopefully uh, take some new look at the game and kind of absorb the game in a different manner from being on the field to kind of running the field. So hopefully I can uh, learn some things from these 12 year old kids and learn things about myself this summer so I can come back next year and apply it to, uh, to my, my peers and my teammates. Absolutely. Eric, thank you so much for taking time interviewing me today. I mean, today is like one of the last days of the semester, fun, and everyone's going home, so yeah. you stuck around with me a little bit, got me to allow me to interview, so I want to thank you for that. It was fun, man.
So, Knights fans, I'm joined here with junior captain MVP Eric Snyder here at the Namoli Family Baseball Complex. But, Knights fans, make sure to tune in to FDUKnights.com for all your updates, videos, and stats of all FDU baseball and all FDU, FDU athletics. I want to thank everyone for bringing me into your computers or your home screens every day to watch Knights Baseball Roundup and every week for all FDU athletics. Hope you have a great summer. We want you to come back next season to watch another season of the Knights Baseball Roundup. Have a great day, folks. Take care.